Want to speak real Bulgarian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at bulgarianpod101.com. Immersion is often hailed as the most efficient and effective way to learn a foreign language. In many ways, it's true. With all the language learning methods out there, nothing else comes close to having to think and interact with your environment in the language you're learning. Unfortunately, though, most language learners wrongly assume that the only way to experience language immersion is to pack up and move to a foreign country. But not everyone can afford to spend a summer abroad just to learn a foreign language. Luckily, there are other ways to immerse yourself. These methods are less obvious, but they are effective. In this video, we'll take a look at five steps you can take for the ultimate language immersion experience at home. Number one, transform your digital world into your target language. Technology is an indispensable part of modern life. We interact with phones, computers, tablets, and other electronic devices throughout the day. Why not take these interactions and use them to practice your target language? Most devices give you the option of switching the language of the operating system. Switching your phone or laptop interface to your target language won't make you fluent, but it will help you engage with the language in a very practical way multiple times every day. Another way to transform your digital life is to check which sites you use on a daily basis and use them in your target language also. A great example of this is switching your version of Google. Using Google in your target language will allow you to search for things in that language and you're more likely to get results in that language as well. So if you're looking for a popular band, a show, or food, something that's usually written in your target language, it will actually be easier to find information about it if you switch your version of Google. Of course, you can also change popular social networks like Facebook or Twitter. You can even go to news sites for your fill of global news. Do you like podcasts? Try listening to a couple popular podcasts in your target language. Number two, write out a speech or conversation in your target language. A surefire way to increase your ability in a foreign language is to write out a mock conversation or speech in that language. Pretend you have to give a speech on one of your favorite topics. It could be anything from sports, hobbies, or even your favorite movie genre. Now, take some time to write out your fictitious speech. Inevitably, you will hit some roadblocks. But when you get stuck, research the words or grammar points you don't know. This is a highly effective and practical way to increase your vocabulary, and it'll help you practice thinking in a different language. Writing a long, connected train of thoughts exposes the gaps and weaknesses in your language studying. Once you know what these are, you're free to practice them and use them to continue on with your speech. This is also a great way to learn new words in the context of your entire speech. Context is king when you're learning a language. Learning words in the context of other words and sentences helps you surmise what new words mean. It also helps you get comfortable with how these words are practically used. Not to mention, context helps you to remember and recall new information more easily. Number three, practice with native speakers. There are a lot of great learning resources out there for anyone learning a new language. However, nothing quite comes close to practicing the language with a real person. If you live in or around a large metropolitan area, there's a chance that there are some native speakers nearby. Check and see if your area has any local language exchanges or language speaking groups. You're likely to find a native speaker there. If you can't make a connection locally, you can search online. Just as there are language exchanges in the real world, there are also online ones, most of which are free. Number four, connect with other language learners. Native speakers aren't the only people who can aid you on your language learning journey. Practicing with other learners is also helpful. Don't worry if you practice with someone who has a higher or lower level in the language than you. If you're the more advanced learner, you can learn a lot by teaching someone else. As you help someone else understand difficult words or grammatical concepts, you'll find that you start to better understand them yourself. If your learning partner has a higher level, they can be the one to help you overcome the hurdles you encounter as a beginner. After all, what better way to learn than from someone who, as a language learner, has been in your shoes? Number five, reward yourself in your target language. At the end of a busy day, we all love a little relaxation and me time. One of the most enjoyable and effective ways to develop your language skills is to kick back and enjoy the language while doing leisure activities. Whether it's listening to music, watching a movie or TV show, reading a book, or even enjoying a good online video binge, 
Even spending just an extra 30 minutes a day doing something you love in your target language can yield some serious long-term results. If you're a beginner, start with more basic content. You might have to start out listening to simple songs or even watching children's shows. After a while, though, you'll be able to dive into the meatier stuff and more engaging stuff as your proficiency increases. Learning a foreign language doesn't mean you have to spend your days straining over grammar rules or textbooks. Any way that you can take your learning off the page and make it more enjoyable will help you learn faster. Immersion is a powerful way to learn a foreign language. And now, more than ever, the immersion experience isn't limited to just world travelers. With a little creativity and the right resources, you can experience the language without ever having to leave your hometown. Many of these resources can be found with our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to immerse yourself in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Want to speak real Bulgarian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at BulgarianPod101.com. 10 phrases you always want to hear. So, are you ready to start complimenting other people? Let's go! Izgleždaš strahotno dnes. Izgleždaš strahotno dnes. You look great today. Now, is something that I would like to point your attention on is the word strahotno, which is literally translated as scary, by the way, because it uh, derives from the word strašno, which is scary. So Bulgarians use it in a way of saying great, but it's funny how uh, it sounds when you think about it. You look scary today. And it sounds such a normal thing to say in Bulgarian, by the way. Uh, so use it everywhere you go. You look wonderful today. You look great today. Izgleždaš strahotno dnes. Lipsvaš mi. Lipsvaš mi. I miss you. Yes, this is something uh, either say, say too rarely or we do say excessively. I do encourage everybody to find a balance in it. And this comes from meaning it uh, from your heart. I am going to miss you until the next episode. Ste mi lipsvate. Svrši čudesna rabuta. Svrši čudesna rabuta. You did a great job. Yes, uh, I do believe that if somebody hears this phrase more often, they're not only going to be flattered, but they will uh, improve their work overall. Svrši čudesna rabuta. Ste ima bonus v kraju na meseca. Ste ima bonus v kraju na meseca. There will be a bonus at the end of the month. It's definitely what everybody would like to hear if they have done a good job. Even if they have not done a good job, it will make them do a better job. Because imagine if you're doing something for many years and you don't receive any kind of appreciation for that. Not even a single small thing. So the bonus is definitely something you should use to make somebody do better work. Ti gotviš prevashodno. Ti gotviš prevashodno. You're an excellent cook. Yes, everybody would like to hear that, even though sometimes you may burn the dish, but your friends are there to support you, so they may be saying, oh, as, as if they're mocking you. Ti si prevashodan. Gotvač, ti gotviš prevashodno. You are an exceptional cook. Uh, well, the more you burn dishes, I know, the better you become as a cook, so please never stop cooking. Počini si. Aš te počistja dnes. Počini si. Aš te počistja dnes. Take a break. I'll do the cleaning today. Opens the heart and the doors to every mother's heart. Guaranteed, proof, uh, read, and checked, and all that. I vie pečelite. I 
Вие печелите. And you win. I uh, specifically think that if you invest the money you spend on scratch tickets into something else, you are on the winning side of spending your money. For sure. Ти беше прав. Ти беше прав. You were right. Why is it so hard to admit something like that? I don't know. Maybe because Bulgarian people, they think they know everything about everything. Uh, from science to sport to politics to anything. Uh, so please say it uh, even though people are not right. Nosia ti nešto specialno. Nosia ti nešto specialno. I brought you something special. It is very intriguing and exciting to hear something like that, isn't it? Uh, unless the special something is a cat. And there you can bid farewell to your living room couch. Бюджетът е неограничен. Бюджетът е неограничен. The budget is unlimited. Can you imagine a world where there is no money or, or there is a budget, but it's unlimited. What are the things that everybody can do? Everybody can accomplish their dreams, no matter how far-fetched are they. You can even uh, go to the end of the universe if there is such. Mm-hmm. So, unlimited budget, unlimited dreams. Make it happen. Want to finally start speaking in your target language? In this guide, you'll discover the top seven ways to practice speaking on your own with our lessons. Let's begin. Number one, shadowing. Shadowing is a proven learning technique where all you do is repeat what you hear in order to practice speaking. So access any audio or video lesson on the site and press the play button to start. Then as you listen or watch, just repeat the conversations or even easier, Read along out loud with the dialogue section. The script is right there in front of you. With our lessons, you can master entire conversations just like that. Number two, read out loud. I just mentioned it, but reading out loud is another powerful tactic and deserves its own mention. With every lesson, you get written transcripts and translations. So as you play the lesson, read the dialogue out loud as you hear it. Why? By reading out loud, you're also practicing your speaking skills. You can do this with the lesson notes, the lesson transcript, or the dialogue tool. With the dialogue tool, you can listen to each line again and again, and repeat out loud until you master them all. Number three, speed up your reading to speed up your speaking. Being able to speak without thinking is a sign of language mastery. If you're talking to a native and can respond quickly, they'll assume that you're fairly fluent. How can you do this? When you read out loud, try increasing your speed a little bit every time. So start by reading with the dialogue tool. If you're like most learners, you'll read the first line slowly. That's because you're still getting used to the words, which is okay. Reread it. On your second try, you know most of the words and you'll read a little faster. Reread it again. On your third try, you'll be even faster at a native speaker's speed. And being able to read these phrases out loud and fast will help you speak fast. Number four, record and compare yourself with native speakers. In order to sound like a native speaker, you must imitate native speakers. So here's how. Access the voice recorder, which is in the dialogue study tool in every lesson. Click on the microphone icon. Listen to the native speaker's audio and then record yourself. You can then compare the two recordings side by side and practice and try again and again until you perfect your pronunciation. Number five, get feedback from our Premium Plus teacher. If you're learning by yourself and don't have access to real teachers, then you can always get feedback from our Premium Plus teachers. With the My Teacher tool, you can record yourself speaking and send the audio file to the teacher. They'll review it and tell you what to improve and how. That's it. Number six, level up your speaking with Premium Plus assignments. With Premium Plus, you can also get assignments that cover reading, writing, listening, and even speaking from your teacher. 
These assignments can be tailored to your goals and needs. You get a new one every week or anytime you're ready for a new one. Number seven, get even more lessons in the lesson library. If you want even more lessons on speaking and conversations, visit our lesson library and under category, choose conversation. You'll get all of the pathways and lessons that are focused on speaking. Top 25 Bulgarian phrases that they are. I mean, these are key phrases that you need to start a conversation, to introduce yourself, to say the, the basic phrases of every language. So if you want to be 25 Bulgarian phrases ahead of the rest of the people who don't know those, grab a pen and a notebook and let's start. Zdravej. Zdravej. Hello. How to start? How should we start? I think there's no better way to start but to say Zdravej. <laughs> Zdravej. Hello. Well, hello everyone. Um, Zdravej is like an informal way to say it. You can say Zdravejte, the formal one. Um, also plural, yeah. You can say Zdravejte to multiple people. And also if um, if you hear that some Bulgarian people say Zdrasti, Zdrasti, this is the short version of hello. Just hi. Dobro utro. Dobro utro. Good morning. How do you usually start the day? If you see somebody, you would greet them with Dobro utro. Dobro utro. Good morning. This phrase I love a lot because of the vibration of it. Dobro utro. Practice your R's in, uh, in this phrase. Also, I like to use it because we're one step ahead um, of our southern neighbors, the Greek people, who don't even have a phrase for good morning. They just start from Kalimera, which is the day. I don't know why nobody celebrates the morning over there. We do. Dobar den. Dobar den. Good afternoon. Moving on later in the day. Dobar den. Dobar den. Good afternoon. Now, here's a tricky part because it may be 10 a.m. in the morning, but you can hear a Bulgarian saying Dobar den which literally is good afternoon, but we use it more as good day to you. So remember it, dobar den. Leka nošt. Leka nošt. Good night. When you go to bed, you would hear a Bulgarian person wishing you leka nošt. Leka nošt. This is good night. Good night, good night. I remember a song from my childhood. There was a television show just before the little kids would go to bed. Uh, and the show was called Lekanost de Tsa. Good night, children. De Tsa. And it was about a character named Suncho. Suncho, which is like a sleepy boy. Anyway, memories from my childhood. Moving on. Как се казваш? Как се казваш? What's your name? Now that you've learned how to greet people according to the part of the day your encounter is happening, how to properly introduce yourself? You can ask them for, for their name. Как се казваш? Как се казваш? This is pretty much asking what's your name? You can also make it uh, plural or formal by saying te at the end. Kak se kazva te? What is your name formal? And how do we reply to that? As sam maya. As sam maya. I'm maya. As sam daria. As sam daria. As sam daria. This is a way of saying, I am Daria. 
And what do we usually add after that, after we introduce our name? Приятно ми е да се запознаем. Приятно ми е да се запознаем. Nice to meet you. Usually after we say our name, we would add. Приятно ми е да се запознаем. Right? It's very simple. <laughs> Приятно ми е да се запознаем. Nice to meet you. Now, you can just use the first uh, part of this phrase, which is Приятно ми е. It's nice. <laughs> That's pretty much enough for a Bulgarian. But if you m- want to sound more like a true Bulgarian, you gotta say Приятно ми е да се запознаем. Как си? Как си? How are you? Как си? Как си? How are you? This is a classic question you can ask anybody and uh, it's a door opener, by the way. I've heard I use it quite a lot in the US or other countries. However, please, I beg of you, when you ask Kaxi, really show interest and really mean it. Kaxi. Благодаря добре. А ти? Благодаря добре. А ти? I'm fine, thanks. And you? And usually there is the answer. Благодаря добре. А ти? Благодаря добре. А ти? Literally, uh, I'm fine, thank you. And how about you? Благодаря добре. Благодаря добре. А ти? I'm fine, thanks. And you? Literally, благодаря is thank you. Добре is good. Thank you, good. А ти? And you? Uh, you can juggle with that or you can say how you really feel. You may be moody, you may be happy. You may be uh, anxious. So you can add whatever you like in that little phrase. Благодаря, добре. Благодаря, не добре. Моля. Моля. Please. Моля. Моля. It's a very important word because it shows politeness. It shows good intention. This is the Bulgarian word for please. Please. Also, mole means uh, I beg you, I beg of you. But uh, you can also add it to um, any sentence if you would like to request something. And we'll see later on how to use mole. Благодаря. Благодаря. Thank you. The next word is a very important one because it shows gratitude. Благодаря. Благодаря. One word. It means thank you. But the root of the word is благо, which is... um, Oh, the best, the best things or the nice things. Daria, I'm gifting them to you. Like nice things I'm giving. Um, so you can say благодаря. But also for people who don't feel um, confident in saying this long word in Bulgarian, it's fine for you to use the French merci because we've stolen that one in our language. Пак заповядай. Пак заповядай. You are welcome. And usually if you say благодаря, you can say right afterwards. Пак заповядай. Пак заповядай. You are welcome. And you have the nicest of nicest things in your relationship with the person you have just met. Nice, nice base to work on from then on. Да. 
Yes. Here are the two most important words to reply a yes and no question, which are which are the words yes and no. Da, da in Bulgarian means yes. Ne, no. Ne in Bulgarian means no. But don't confuse it with the type of nodding, because all over the world, this means da, and this means ne. But only in Bulgaria, it's vice versa. So this would mean no, and this would mean yes. Not ne, da. Why? I can't even tell you. I can't. <laughs> Some psychology thing, sociology, I don't know. Dobre. Okay. Remember the phrase that we've used before? Blagoderia dobre. Uh, replying to how are you feeling today? Uh, good, thank you. Good. This is the word dobre. Dobre. This means okay in Bulgarian and it's okay to use it as much as possible just because of the good vibration of it. Dobre, dobre. Izvinete. Izvinete. Excuse me. Another of the top 25 Bulgarian phrases that everybody should know is izvinete. Izvinete. Excuse me. Yes. People should learn how to use this word as much as possible because, first of all, Bulgarian people rarely use it. Why? If, so, if they step on your foot uh, or they push you or punch you, do something horrible to you, they would say, Opa! They may even crush your car and they will say, Opa! Which literally is, oops! They would not say, excuse me, I apologize, and they would just go away. Yeah, because uh, we are such people. But really, a lot of people say opa. Opa, which is, I think it's a Greek word as well. Opa. Opa. Opa, hey. Uh, okay. Sajalavam. Sajalavam. I'm sorry. Another good word to use is sajalavam. Now, uh, this means I'm sorry, and I'm sorry, but a lot of people ha ha find difficulty pronouncing the, now I'm having difficulty speaking, pronouncing uh, the uh in the beginning, because we have this sound, uh, uh. The Brazilian people would understand perfectly what I'm talking about because they have this sound, but if you don't, stress on sejalhavam. Uh, sejalhavam. It actually makes you makes your body feel good after you say it. So I'm sorry. Use it as much as you can. Kolko e chasat? Kolko e chasat? What time is it? So you're walking the streets of Sofia or Plovdiv and you have a meeting with a, a local person to show you around. You've agreed to meet at 2 o'clock somewhere, but you don't have a watch. Uh, the phone, the battery on your phone is dead, so there is no way for you to know is it 2 o'clock already or not. Here is a way to ask for it. Kolko chasat? Kolko e chasat? What's the time? Usually, as, a, as an answer, you would get just a number. Two, <laughs> dva, dva chasa, tri chasa, četiri, and it's useful if you know the Bulgarian numbers. Kade e tualetnata? Kade e tualetnata? Where is the restroom? Another very useful phrase, which is definitely among the top 25 Bulgarian phrases you should know, is this one. Kade e toaletnata? Kade e toaletnata? The double O. Okay, where is the restroom? 
Um, <laughs> I don't know why, uh, why I feel saying that learning this will open a lot of doors for you. Hopefully it will open a lot of doors for you and you don't have to wait in front of the restroom. But in Bulgaria, there are a lot, a lot of uh, public restrooms around or you can use any cafe or restaurant for this. Uh, and literally, you can just say toilet and they'll understand you because toilet, toaletna. Very similar. Ischakajte za moment. Ischakajte za moment. Wait a moment. Here's another phrase. If you hear somebody say, Ischakajte za moment. Ischakajte za moment. They usually mean, wait a moment. I hope you don't hear this uh, in front of the restroom door. But in case that happens, you know that you have to wait. Hey, sometimes in life you have to wait for the good things to come and to happen to you. Колко струва това? Колко струва това? How much is this? So you ha- you've had a wonderful day sightseeing and you've met the local person and then you enter a souvenir shop but in the souvenir shop there is no price announced now if that happens you can ask koliko struva tova koliko struva tova how much is this and again they will give you a number as an answer so it's always handy and good to learn the bulgarian numbers first Pomost. Pomost. Help. If you need help, ask for it. You can say pomost. Pomost. Help. Yell it as loud as you can. Pomost. Pomost. Um, it's a funny thing that we Bulgarians have been exposed so much to Western movies that. Almost everybody would know the English version of of Pomost, which is help. However, you will sound like a true Bulgarian if you learn Pomost. Do skoro. Do skoro. See you later. We are almost towards the end. It seems proper that I give you two phrases of how to part with people. So, bear with me. Do skoro. Do skoro. Means, uh, see you later. Do viždane. Do viždane. Goodbye. Another word would be do viždane. Do viždane. Goodbye. And... Don't be afraid to use the Italian ciao because it's so short and so easy and everybody uses it. And this is another foreign word that we have stolen and claimed in our, in our Bulgarian language. Ne znam. Ne znam. I don't know. Ne znam. Ne znam. This is a way of saying, I don't know. And in my personal opinion, this phrase can get you out of almost any situation. Whatever they ask you, you just say, ne znam. And you can add bulgarski at the end of that sentence. For example, ne znam bulgarski. (laughs) And that will be enough for the people to leave you alone. Mm Mm-hmm. If you do know Bulgarian, which you do by watching BulgarianPod101.com, you can just say Znam. I know. Bulgarski. Bulgarian. Znam Bulgarski. I know Bulgarian. Want to speak real Bulgarian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at BulgarianPod101.com. Zdravej. Zdravej. Hello. How to start? How should we start? I think 
There is no better way to start but to say Zdravej! <laughs> Zdravej! Hello! Well, hello everyone! Um, Zdravej is like an informal way to say it. You can say Zdravej te, the formal one. Um, also plural, yeah. You can say Zdravej te to multiple people. And also if, um, if you hear that some Bulgarian people say Zdrasti, Zdrasti. This is the short version of hello. Just hi. Adjective. Prilagatelno. Prilagatelno. Afternoon. Sledobet. Sledobet. Air conditioner. Klimatik. Klimatik. Airplane. Samolet. Samolet. Best. Najdubar. Najdubar. Big. Golam. Golam. Bitter. Gorchif. Gorchif. Boring. Otekchitelen. Otekchitelen. Molia. Molia. Please. Molia. Molia. It's a very important word because it shows politeness, it shows good intention. This is the Bulgarian word for please. Please, also mole means uh, I beg you, I beg of you, but uh, you can also add it to um, any sentence if you would like to request something. And we'll see later on how to use mole. Blagodaria. Blagodaria. Thank you. The next word is a very important one because it shows gratitude. Blagodaria. Blagodaria. One word. It means thank you. But the root of the word is blago, which is um, all the best, the best things or the nice things. Daria, I'm gifting them to you. Like nice things I'm giving. Um, so you can say blagodaria, but also for people who don't feel um, confident in saying this long word in Bulgarian, it's fine for you to use the French merci, because we've stolen that one in our language. Pak zapowiadaj. Pak zapowiadaj. You are welcome. And usually if you say blagodaria, you can say right afterwards. Pak zapowiadaj. Pak zapowiadaj. You are welcome. And you have the nicest of nicest things in your relationship with the person you have just met. Nice, nice base to work on from then on. Da. Yes. Here are the two most important words to reply a yes and no question, which are, which are the words yes and no. Da, da in Bulgarian means yes. Ne, no. Ne in Bulgarian means no. But don't confuse it with the type of nodding, because all over the world this means da, and this means ne, but only in Bulgaria it's vice versa. So this would mean no, and this would mean yes. Not ne, da. Why? I can't even tell you. I can't. <laughs> Some psychology thing, sociology, I don't know. Boy. Mumche. Mumche. Boyfriend. Priyatel. 
Приятел. Bread. Хляб. Хляб. Пас. Автобус. Автобус. Backbone. Гробнак. Гробнак. Door. Заден двор. Заден двор. Banana. Банан. Банан. Bandage. Привръзка. Привръзка. До скоро. До скоро. See you later. We are almost towards the end. It seems proper that I give you two phrases of how to part with people. So bear with me. До скоро. До скоро. Means uh, see you later. Довиждане. Довиждане. Goodbye. Another word would be довиждане. Довиждане. Goodbye. And don't be afraid to use the Italian ciao because it's so short and so easy and everybody uses it. And this is another foreign word that we have stolen and claimed in our, in our Bulgarian language. Bave. Kopiase. Kopiase. Bathroom. Banya. Banya. Be late. Zakasnyavam. Zakasnyavam. Beard. Brada. Brada. Beautiful. Красив. Красив. Bed. Легло. Легло. Want to speak real Bulgarian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at BulgarianPod101.com. A table for five. Masa za petima. Masa za petima. Absolutely. Napono. Napono. All right. Razbira se. Razbira se. Are you all right? Dobre li si? Dobre li si? Are you on Facebook? Imaš li Facebook? Имаш ли Facebook? Awesome. Страхотно. Страхотно. Bye. Чао. Чао. Bye-bye. Чао, чао. Чао, чао. Can I borrow this? Мога ли да взема това на заем? Мога ли да взема това на заем? Can I have a bag, please? Може ли турбичка, моля? Може ли турбичка, моля? Can I have a receipt, please? Може ли касовата бележка, моля? Може ли касовата бележка, моля? Can I sit here? Мога ли да седна тук? Мога ли да седна тук? Can I try it on? Мога ли да го пробвам? Мога ли да го пробвам? Can you download this file? Можеш ли да свалиш този файл? Можеш ли да свалиш този файл? 
Check. Smet kata. Smet kata. Congratulations. Pozdravlenia. Pozdravlenia. Could I have your attention, please? Може ли да ви помоля за вашето внимание? Може ли да ви помоля за вашето внимание? Delicious. Вкусно. Вкусно. Do you need anything? Трябва ли ти нещо? Трябва ли ти нещо? Do you speak English? Говорите ли английски? Говорите ли английски? Do you understand? Разбираш ли? Разбираш ли? Does this bus go to? Този автобус отива ли до? Този автобус отива ли до? Don't do it. Не го прави. Не го прави. Don't mention it. Не го споменавай. Не го споменавай. Don't worry. Не се притеснявай. Не се притеснявай. Everything is great. Всичко е чудесно. Всичко е чудесно. Excuse me, do you know where that is? Извинете, знаете ли къде е? Извинете, знаете ли къде е? Excuse me. Извинете ме. Извинете ме. Go straight ahead. Вървете направо. Вървете направо. Good afternoon. Добър ден. Добър ден. Want to speak real Bulgarian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at bulgarianpod101.com. Здравей! Здравей! Hello! How to start? How should we start? I think there's no better way to start but to say Здравей! <laughs> Здравей! Hello! Well, hello everyone! Um, Здравей is like an informal way to say it. You can say Здравейте, the formal one. Um, also plural, yeah. You can say Здравейте to multiple people. And also if... Um, if you hear that some Bulgarian people say Zdrasti, Zdrasti, this is the short version of hello, just hi. Dobro utro, dobro utro, good morning. How do you usually start the day? If you see somebody, you would greet them with dobro utro, dobro utro. Good morning. This phrase I love a lot because of the vibration of it. Dobro utro. Practice your R's in, uh, in this phrase. Also, I like to use it because we're one step ahead um, of our southern ne- neighbors, the Greek people, who don't even have a phrase for good morning. They just start from Kalimera, which is the day. I don't know why nobody celebrates the morning over there. We do. Dobar den. Dobar den. Good afternoon. Moving on later in the day. Dobar den. Dobar den. Good afternoon. Now, here's a tricky part because it may be 10 a.m. in the morning, but you can hear a Bulgarian saying Dobar den which literally is good afternoon, but we use it more as good day to you. So remember it, dobar den. Leka nošt. 
Leka nošt. Good night. When you go to bed, you would hear a Bulgarian person wishing you Leka nošt. Leka nošt. This is good night. Good night, good night. I remember a song from my childhood. There was a television show just before the little kids would go to bed. Uh, and the show was called Lekanosht Deca. Good night, children. Deca. And it was about a character named Suncho. Suncho, which is like a sleepy boy. Anyway, memories from my childhood. Moving on. Как се казваш? Как се казваш? What's your name? Now that you've learned how to greet people according to the part of the day your encounter is happening, how to properly introduce yourself? You can ask them for, for their name. Как се казваш? Как се казваш? This is pretty much asking what's your name? You can also make it uh, plural or formal by saying te at the end. Как се казва те? What is your name formal? And how do we reply to that? Как се казва те? Как се казва те? What's your name? Here is the first question. Как се казва те? Как се казва те? What's your name? Great. Pay attention that kazvate is actually formal way to say, uh, to ask for somebody's name. Kazvate. The informal way and first person of the verb kazvamse is kazvash. Kak se kazvash. You can ask this to somebody you feel familiar with. How to reply? Very simple. Kazvamse Daria. Kazvam se Daria. My name is Daria. Very simple. And you can also say as sum Daria. I am Daria. Various, various names. You can even forget the um, verb part and ju just reply with your name. As simple as that. Kak ste? Kak ste? How are you? The next question you should know actually logically follows the first one. Как сте? Как сте? How are you? Right? After you ask for somebody's name, let's ask how do they feel? Uh, again, with this one, remember that как сте is a formal way to ask a person. Or you can ask multiple persons, multiple people. Personas. <laughs> okay, great. Как сте? Turns into как си. This is the informal way of asking how are you. And how do you reply? Here is a sample. Добре съм благодаря. Добре съм благодаря. I'm fine. Thank you. Uh, it's a good thing to add the благодаря at the end. It really gives, gives a hint that you are a human being. I encourage you to use благодаря as often as you can. Because in my culture, we don't get to use it a lot. Откъде си? Откъде си? Where are you from? Great! Now that you have found out what's the person's name and how do they feel, you can ask them. Откъде си? Откъде си? Where are you from? Um, and a possible answer to this could be От София. От София. From Sofia. You can change the location and turn it into Plovdiv, Varna, Ruse, Burgas, or whatever uh, town you are from. But this is how you can ask a Bulgarian person. Откъде си? Where are you from? Кога е рожденият ти ден? Кога е рожденият ти ден? When is your birthday? 
Another question I really like to ask people because I'm so uh, interested in astrology that I would like right away to know everybody's zodiac sign. Um, maybe that makes me a little bit prejudiced, but hey, I bond with some er, uh, some signs and some not, so I have to watch out for for those people. So I will ask, koga je rođenje ti den? Koga e rođenjet ti den. When is your birthday? It's a phrase that needs a little bit of practice because of a lot of um, z, d sounds, but uh, you get to it very quickly, I am sure. And how do you reply to that? If you don't want to give away your birthday, you can just reply by uh, giving your month of birth. For example, I am born in February, so I would answer. Prez februari. Prez februari. It's a very similar to February. Februari. Uh, just a little bit of a trick over there in pronunciation, but that means in February. And I indeed was born in February. This makes me an Aquarius. Kade živeš? Kade živeš? Where do you live? So, after you've learned the person's birthday, but before you ask them straight for their bank account number, you can ask them this. Kde živeš? Kde živeš? Where do you live? And, of course, they will try to get around the, uh, the answer. So, you may get an answer like this. Živeja s prijateli. Živeja s prijateli. I live with friends. Of course, this means leave me alone and don't ask me any more questions, please. But hey, it's better to live with friends, by the way, than with your family. It shows up that you are taking responsibility for your adult life. So great that you're living with friends. Izgleždaš strahotno dnes. Izgleždaš strahotno dnes. You look great today. Now, it's something that I would like to point your attention on. It's the word strahotno, which is literally translated as scary, by the way, because it uh, derives from the word strašno, which is scary. So, Bulgarians use it in a way of saying great, but it's funny how uh, it sounds when you think about it. You look scary today. And it sounds such a normal thing to say in Bulgarian, by the way. Uh, so use it everywhere you go. You look wonderful today. You look great today. Izgleždaš strahotno dnes. Lipsvaš mi. Lipsvaš mi. I miss you. Yes, this is something uh, either say, say too rarely or we do say excessively. I do encourage everybody to find a balance in it. And this comes from meaning it uh, from your heart. I am going to miss you until the next episode. Ste mi lipsvate. Svrši čudesna rabuta. Svrši čudesna rabuta. You did a great job. Yes, uh, I do believe that if somebody hears this phrase more often, they're not only going to be flattered, but they will uh, improve their work overall. Svrši čudesna rabuta. Ste ima bonus v kraju na meseca. Ste ima bonus v kraju na meseca. There will be a bonus at the end of the month. It's definitely what everybody would like to hear if they have done a good job. Even if they have not done a good job, it will make them do a better job. Because imagine if you're doing something for many years and you don't receive any kind of appreciation for that. Not even a single small thing. So the bonus is definitely something you should use to make somebody do better work. Ti gotviš prevashodno. Ti gotviš prevashodno. 
You're an excellent cook. Yes, everybody would like to hear that, even though sometimes you may burn the dish, but your friends are there to support you, so they may be saying, oh, as, as if they're mocking you. Ti si prevashoden, gotvač, ti gotviš prevashodno. You are an exceptional cook. Uh, well, the more you burn dishes, I know, the better you become as a cook, so please never stop cooking. Не си ли качила малко килограми напоследък? Не си ли качила малко килограми напоследък? Have you gained weight recently? One of the worst phrases that nobody wants to hear is this. Не си ли качила малко килограми напоследък? Не си ли качила малко килограми напоследък? Have you gained weight recently? Not a very good thing to hear, especially if you're a woman. That's why the sentence or the the phrase has the feminine uh, inclination in it. So, kachila. You can also try to say to a guy, ne si li kachil malko kilogrami naposledak? But I think For a guy, that's not the worst thing uh, they never want to hear. Because, guys, we women are a little more uh, touchy about the subject of weight. Имаш няколко бели косама. Имаш няколко бели косама. You have a gray hair. Another phrase you may not want to hear, and then again, this is very subjective, And I'll tell you why. Is this phrase. Имаш няколко бели косама. Имаш няколко бели косама. You have a gray hair. And pay attention then in the Bulgarian uh, version of the sentence. The color of the hair is white. Бели косама. And then it translates as gray hair in English. Which is сив. Awesome, gray hair. But uh, if you tell somebody, oh, you have white hair, you know, uh, uh, I've heard this reply and I love saying it back to people. Oh, it's okay that I have white hair. It's my transitioning into a white swan. So there you go again, subjective. It may be the worst thing you hear. It may be not so bad after all. Moving on to the next phrase. Нали ти казах? Нали ти казах? I told you so. The next phrase is Нали ти казах? Нали ти казах? I told you so. Yes, in the egocentric society that we live nowadays, in the 21st century, this is a very common phrase. And of course, everybody likes to say it and nobody likes to hear it. So, um, it probably helps if you don't speak well Bulgarian that if somebody told you Naliti Kazakh, it will just pass through your ear and go the other way. But you can use this phrase yourself if you want to tease somebody. Uvolnen si. Uvolnen si. You are fired. Again, a phrase you don't want to hear is Uvolnen si. Uvolnen si. You are fired. Um, of course, if you love your job, that's the worst thing you want to hear. The last thing you want to hear is Uvolnen si. However, is it may make somebody extremely happy that they're finally fired. Because soon they'll be hired, that's what it's on my mind. When one door closes, another one opens. Such as the word the blow of the universe. Причината не е в теб, а в мен. Причината не е в теб, а в мен. It's not you, it's me. Moving on to the next phrase that you don't want to hear. Причината не е в теб, а в мен. Причината не е в теб, а в мен. It's not you, it's me. 
what are your associations when you hear this, right? You never trust this sentence because it implies that it's actually you <laughs> that have the fault. The fault is on you, the guilt. But um, and you don't have to worry about hearing this in Bulgaria because nobody will say it this way. They will directly say, it's your fault. So it's you, it's not me. <laughs> to travel abroad. If you ask a random Bulgarian of how he or she would prefer to spend his or her time in the summer, he or she will probably answer, go abroad. Patuvam v chusbinam. To travel abroad. Well, yeah, there is something in our culture that now that we can travel more freely, now that we are in the European Union, we do take advantage of visiting Italy, Greece, and so on and so forth. It's just so easy because it's right there. Uh, however, many other people do not uh, travel or have never been outside the frontier, like my grandmother. Moja te baba nikoga ne potovala v čuzbina. Moja ta baba nikoga ne e potovala v čužbina. My grandma has never traveled abroad. Which is somewhat true about my grandmother because she constantly watches this travel channel and if I call her on a random day and ask her, Hey grandma, how you doing today? She would reply, Hey, hi, I've been to Mexico and Guatemala in Costa Rica this afternoon, how about you? Well, grandma, this may count, but you don't have magnets from the places you've been. Ha ha, so Daria, grandmother, one to zero. Pochivam si na plaza. Pochivam si na plaza. To relax at the beach. Another popular response you might get from a Bulgarian about their free time in the summer would definitely be go to the beach, but not just go, relax on the beach. Počivam si na plaža, to relax at the beach. Here is an example of this phrase in a sentence. Istinskata počivka e kogato si počivam na plaža. Istinskata počivka e kogato si Počivam na plaža. It's a true holiday when I'm relaxing on the beach. This is true for so many people. And by the way, you can be very sure that you can have a relaxing vacation in Bulgaria because we don't have sharks in the Black Sea. There you go. Uče bulgarski jezik z bulgarianpod101.com Uče bulgarski jezik z bulgarianpod101.com To learn Bulgarian with bulgarianpod101.com Another use of your time in the summer is to do something practical and to get a new skill. Uh, improving your skills is something very important. Like uče bulgarski jezik z bulgarianpod101, like you're doing right now. Uče bulgarski jezik Bulgarian Pod 101 to learn Bulgarian with Bulgarian Pod 101. And the next example in a sentence is a tribute to you, the viewers. Možete da naučite bulgarski jezik s bulgarianpod101.com Možete da naučite bulgarski jezik s bulgarianpod101.com you can learn Bulgarian language with BulgarianPod101.com. Yes, it's as simple as that. Just subscribe and keep on watching videos like this. By the way, you're gonna learn a lot of fun facts about Bulgaria in this one. Stay with me. Uče se da gotvija bulgarski jastija. Uče se da gotvija bulgarski jastija. To learn to cook Bulgarian food. Uče se da gotvija bulgarski jastija. Uče se da gotvija bulgarski jastija. To learn to cook Bulgarian food. Oh, definitely this is something very important, especially for um, my friend who recently got married and I'm gonna say why. 
It was very important for her to learn how to cook moussaka. First, let me give you the example with this. Tia iska da se nauči da gotvi bogarski jastija. Tia iska da se nauči da gotvi bulgarski jastija. It's a very simple sentence. Uh, Here is it in English. She wants to learn how to cook Bulgarian, uh, Bulgarian food. Why did she want to do that? Because in Bulgarian culture we have the saying, if a woman does not know how to cook a proper moussaka, then she is not eligible for marriage yet. So, one way to uh, look for a wife, test her cooking skills. Organiziram barbecue. Organiziram barbecue. To have a barbecue. Organiziram barbecue. To have barbecue. Yes, you may not be a sophisticated cook as my friend to cook a whole dish of moussaka or kapama, but barbecue is much simpler and it gives you the benefit to be outside, to cook delicious food and to share it with as many friends as you have. So here's an example of how to use this phrase in Bulgarian. V nedelja šte organizirame barbecue. V nedelja šte organizirame barbecue. We will organize a barbecue on Sunday. By the way, here's a bonus to, uh, to this phrase. I'm going to give you the Bulgarian word for barbecue, which is skara. So with skara, every day is a Sunday here in Bulgaria. Welcome. Every day is a skara day. Slunchy vilchila. Sunglasses. Slunchy ochila. Sunglasses. And here is a phrase for you. Tia si ščupi slončevite učila. Tia si ščupi slončevite učila. She broke her sunglasses. Well, I guess it's not the end of the world because wherever you look at the Bulgarian seaside, you will find sunglasses sold everywhere. They may not be original, but hey, it's an emergency, so I guess five euro per pair of decent sunglasses would, uh, would do the job, right? <laughs> Plus, beach. Another word that you will need for, for when you go to the beach is the word beach itself. Plush, beach. And here is an example of how we can use this word. Hajde da otidem na plaža. Hajde da otidem na plaža. Let's go to the beach. Well, definitely learn that one in case you have some people who like to be lazy and they don't uh, want to catch the early um, sun rays, which are the best for you, I've heard. Because the longer you wait, um, and if you go to the beach around noon, it gets very bad for your skin. And some things like melanoma can happen. So avoid this and push your friends and uh, family to go to the beach with this phrase. Hajde da utidem na plaža. Come on, come on, chop, chop, hajde. Let's go to the next word. Pluvam. Swim. Pluvam. Swim. Pluvam. I hope you can swim. Uh, here is the question you can ask your friends if they can swim. Možeš li da pluvaš? Možeš li da pluvaš? It's a very good question, is especially if you and your friends decide to rent a boat for the day and uh, in case somebody cannot swim, you, you would of course like to know that so that you don't have any emergencies later. So, can you swim? Možeš li da pluvaš? Let's find out! Slunce. Sun. The next word that you will need for the beach is one of my favorite words. Not because it's a little bit hard to pronounce, but it's because it's the source of life on this planet Earth. Slunce. Sun. Slunce tu se skriza toblaka. Slunce tu 
се скри зад облака. The sun disappeared behind the cloud. Hey, believe it or not, the sun wants a break from us human beings too. <laughs> so it hit, it hides behind clouds, which is good for you as well because you are not directly burned when you lie on the beach in your swimsuit and um, you get a tan. But be very careful because even through clouds you can burn. A little less, but still. Palma. Palm tree. Great. So when you are at the beach and the sun is shining very hard, slunce, then it's a good thing to find a palm tree to hide underneath and use the, sh the shade of the palm tree. So here's the next word. Palma. Palm tree. Uh, here's an example of how you can use this word in a sentence. Палмите не могат да оцелеят през студената зима. Палмите не могат да оцелеят през студената зима. A fact. Palm trees cannot survive during the cold winter. And sometimes in Bulgaria we do have cold winters. Uh, what we don't have in Bulgaria usually is palm trees. However, you can see them now. They're very popular at the seaside. Um, because some cruel people want to do cruel things to the poor palm trees. However, they get around it by wrapping them in plastic wrap so that they can survive the cold winter. And not only at the seaside, but ask the mayor of my hometown, Plovdiv, that is in the middle of Bulgaria. No sea around it, but hey, we do have palm trees. Palma. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.